is again Alexander here. Today I will show you how to create some advanced layering options such as these ones if you want maybe an image or an illustration to pop out of a frame, if you want to surround a cutout or an image of yourself with some other elements or anything like that really. So the first thing I'm going to do is recreate this image here. To do this you want to search for something like organic lines or abstract organic lines if you want thicker lines for the frame. Another keyword is abstract organic and I will actually opt for one of the lines here such as this one because it's a bit more complicated so you can see how you can use very diverse lines. Now the first thing you're going to do is go to your photos so we can find an image for the background. Now you can use anything here from forest, sea, beaches, abstract backgrounds, anything like that really. And I can just keep my image here and you will go to your frames which will allow you to add this image within a specific frame or look for organic frames and choose one of the frames here. I am going to make this just slightly bigger so I can make sure it covers everything. Then I'm dragging my image to the frame and it's best to do this at this point and that is adjusting the background image as you need it. Maybe adding some brightness, moving the contrast around, working with the saturation. And then what you're going to do is send this entire frame backwards behind the actual mask. I am going to position this image so that it's within the entire frame I have. And now what you're going to do next is cover everything that's outside of the pink frame in this case. To do this, you can go to your shapes or just type in rectangle or square, add in one of these shapes and turn it into your background color. And you will start adding these wherever you want to cover what's outside of the lines by sending them backward. You can always just lock every single new layer you add to make sure you don't move it around later, but I prefer adding all of the squares and then doing the locking. So you're going to copy this, paste it, make this smaller, spin it around as needed, again send it backward, copy this again, paste it, send backward, paste again. You can always just copy once and paste as many times as needed and send to the back. Now you can just lock all of these little squares. You can individually click on them or click on one and press shift as you are holding the rest to select multiple ones. And now you will only have the image and your background. Now to find some illustrations, you can just look through the illustrations from the elements section, add in maybe a photo of yours, or look for a keyword such as this one. I will soon have a video on these keywords you can use to find amazing elements. And I will also be updating my Skillshare course on Canva with a complete list of these. If you want to check that out, you can find a link in the description below. And really you're going to choose one of the illustrations, any of them work, and you're going to find maybe the best positioning for it. And the first thing I'm going to do is copy this, paste it, keep this on the side for a while. Then I'm going back to this original one and positioning it backwards. And I am going to zoom on this quite a bit. You will want to lower the transparency for this. Make sure you have all of the lines aligned as much as possible. Double click on this and then you're going to cut this as needed. Go back to your transparency and raise it up again. If it's not okay, like you can see in this case, you can just rearrange this a bit and double click again to maybe cut some more out of it until it looks decent. And as a fun trick, you can go back to another illustration you have or just one here. You can actually cut just this heart element from here. Click on done, make it smaller and reuse it in one of these images again. And if you want to take this maybe one step further, you can perhaps look for another illustration, add it here, make it smaller, 
and send it backward and just add loads of others like these. Next, we are looking at how you can recreate this image here and you can add in one of your own photos and remove the background on it or just go to photos and find maybe a woman, anything like that. Go to effects, background remover. I am positioning this here. I am also checking to see if the background remover did a good job because if there's anything that's missing, you can always erase or restore what has been deleted. And I am going back to my elements and looking for something like abstract organic lines. And from here, you want to select something that will kind of surround this woman. So let's go for something like this, spin it around just a bit. I'm also changing the color. Then the first thing I want to do is send this to the very background by going to position, backward. Then I'm going to copy it, paste it, and make sure it's aligned right on top. You can always zoom in to make sure this is okay. Then you want to double click on this until you get this frame, which indicates that you can finally cut this. And you are going to lower this like so or just really see where you can fit in this line. Click on done. Then notice we have a missing space here. So I'm going to paste again the same element, positioning it correctly. Go to crop and just have this part here. Click on done. And we are pretty much done. You can always just come in and add maybe one more element to this. If you are happy with the way this looks, you honestly don't have to cut anything else. Now, next, I want to create a cutout image where the profile image pops out of a frame or anything else like that. The first thing I'm going to do is add a color for the background, then go to elements, add in a frame. Anything works really, but a round frame provides clean design. Next, I'm going to my photos or to the ones you can upload. Select your image, drag it on top of your frame, and then I'm going to enlarge this just as much as I need it. Leave it like this, or you can filter and adjust it, like adding a grail scale onto it. And then I am locking this just to make sure I am not adding another image inside the frame by accident. Then go back and add your original image once again. Lower the transparency a bit and I'm going to zoom in so we can position the original image right on top of the one in the background and just make sure this is as close as possible. You can use the transparency to kind of check how this will look like and match perhaps the lines here where the frame meets with the background like so. I am bumping my transparency, click on crop and I am cutting this image like so. Click on done, go to effect, background remover, filter, grayscale, and you've got an image that as you can see it pops out of the frame it has. You can also go and search for something like a um, circle like this and maybe position it backwards so you can have a frame for your uh, initial image frame. Now you can also go one step further and add some animated elements or cute designs such as a mouse click that's animated and add it maybe here. You can also look for sparkles. And you don't have to use all three of them. You can double click on this and cut out just one of them. Look for an animated star or something like that, kind of like this, that you will position backwards and it will really just pop from behind your image. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. As always, I'm leaving some links to my courses in the description below. Let me know what other types of videos you'd like to see on my channel. And until next time, take care. Have a wonderful week ahead.